Welcome back to Cypress Academy, PSOC 6 101. In the last video, I showed you how to use the UART and the printf. Now let's get started building the main controller project for the robot arm. When you look in the PSOC 6 Creator workspace with all of the projects that you can get off of our website, the final version of the main robot controller will be called, get this, main controller. But I will also give you a project for each of these steps as I build through these lessons. Those projects will be called MC-2 something or the other. For instance, in this case, you will find MC-2-1-UART because this is the UART part of the project. This is gonna enable you to sort of figure out what's going on as we go step by step without having to look at the whole thing at the end. So now I'm gonna create the main project of our BLE controlled robot arm. First, do this by doing file, new project, just like before. Let's name this main controller. In the schematic, I will start by dragging and dropping a UART component from the component library, just like I did before. I'm gonna rename it UART, then I need to set up the pins in the design-wide resources for P50 and P51, just like we did last time. Now, let's set up the free RTOS and retarget IO build settings like we did before in the previous lesson by going to the build settings and selecting the checkbox for free RTOS and the checkbox for retarget IO. Now run generate application. Then fix the free RTOS config.h to get rid of the warning. Turn on semaphores and change the heap size to 48K. Next, configure the standard IO underscore user dot H for happy printfing by adding the include for the project and updating the SCB that we will use for the standard IO to be UART underscore HW. For the main controller, I'm going to build up a bunch of tasks one for the UART, one for the PWMs, etc. Each one of the tasks will go in their own files, a .c and a .h. For instance, UART task.h and UART task.c. Any communication between the tasks will be done with an RTOS primitive, like a queue, a semaphore, or an event group. Those primitives will be shared in the file global.h. Start by creating the file uarttask.c using right click, add new item, then selecting c file and giving it the name uarttask.c. In that file, first add the includes for the project, freeartask.h, the semaphore, and standard IO. In the first UART example that I showed you, I pulled the UART, but that's really a silly waste of CPU time. For this project, I will use an interrupt so that the task can sleep until a key is pressed. The interrupt service handler will then send a message to the task, the UART task, using a semaphore when it needs to process the keystrokes. The rest of the time, it can just wait and not burn CPU. So I'll declare a handle to hold the semaphore called UART semaphore. Now I need to create the interrupt service routine function called UART underscore ISR. That function will turn off the UART RX interrupts, clear the RX interrupt, and clear the pending interrupt. Once that is done, I will give the semaphore and then switch to the right task. Finally, I will create the UART task, like we did with the blinking LED task before in the free RTOS introduction lesson. I don't need any arguments, so I'll use void arg like before to get rid of the compiler warning. Now let's start the UART, turn off the standard in buffer just like before, and print a message saying that the task has started. I also need to initialize the semaphore. 
To configure the UART interrupt to happen when a key is pressed, there are three steps. First, call cysint init to install the ISR into the CM4 vector table. Then call the SEMSYS function invic underscore enable IRQ to turn on interrupt handling. Finally, call the CYSCB set RX interrupt mask to ask for interrupts when something has been put into the UART RX buffer. The last part of the UART task is the infinite loop. The way that this works is I wait for a semaphore, then read the key press values from the UART until there aren't any more. I process each key with a big switch statement. First, wait for the UART semaphore. Then, while there are keys in the UART RX buffer, get a character from the UART. Then, use a switch to process the different commands. For now, the only command will be the question mark, which will just print out the help message for each of the commands. As we add new commands to the command processor switch, I will add more printfs to this case, as well as put all of the stuff in for the additional cases to handle the other commands. Once all of this is done, you can turn the UART RX interrupt back on and loop back to the top. Now, let's add the header information for the UART task. To do this, create UART task.h by right-clicking the header files folder, selecting add new item, then pick header file, and finally name this file UART task.h. In this file, add a pound pragma once, so that this file is only included into your project one time. Then a function prototype for the UART task. Now that we have built the task, it's time to get started in the main program. To do this, you need to edit the CM4 application. Add the include for the UART task.h and for freeartos.h. Then, launch the UART task and start up the scheduler. All right, let's let it rip by pressing the Build Program button. To test it, go to the terminal again and press question mark. Okay, good, the help function works and we have the framework to add more commands. Now that we have our first UART interface working, in the next video, I will walk you through adding and configuring the PWM peripherals to control the servos in the robotic arm. As always, you can post your comments and questions in our PSOC 6 community, or you're welcome to email me at alan underscore hawes at cypress.com or tweet me at askiotexpert. Thank you.